It's Jim Florentine here, Comedy Metal Midgets Podcast on Riotcast.com. Um, you know, Riotcast.com's got a good website if you guys want to check out some other podcasts on the Rich Foss and his wife, Bonnie McFarlane, Robert Kelly. Um, the Comedy Cellar does one on there. The Jersey Jerks. There's a bunch of cool ones on there. Bailey J. Um, I can't remember the other ones, but, um, you know, it's some good shit out there, man. Thanks for listening. Once again, I got some really good feedback on the good friend one that was last week. It did really well. A ton of downloads. Probably like my second biggest one since um, the Van Halen one I, that I did. I had the audio for when they did that little private show in New York. I think it was that. That and Rock, I think Rock. No, I think this one was bigger even than Rock of Ages. But for some reason, it, it, it had caught on. A lot of people can relate to it being a good friend. They're getting tortured. I did it with my buddy Chad Zumach and uh, Joe Howard. And if you didn't hear it, go back and check it out because a lot of guys can relate to it and a lot of women can relate to it too going, yeah, I was that person. I was that girl that did that to those guys. So um, it was very painful but therapeutic to get through it. Uh, yeah, oh well, what are you going to do? Hey, um, you guys have been... Gr- really suggesting some cool podcasts for me to do different subjects and stuff. I'm going to get to, you know, if I got enough material on it, like I said, but, um, through butterflyradio.com, if you go to butterflyradio.com and download the app, you, it's a, uh, it's free. You can leave me a message and, and a, about a good podcast there. We're going to have a, some contest coming up with butterfly in the next few weeks. will be pretty cool, but you do have to have an iPhone for butterfly. But if you do have the iPhone, go to it, leave a message, leave a, you know, some comments about the podcast or, and, or, uh, a good podcast suggestion. Also, you guys have been sending me email through my uh, email, Jim Florentine, the number 13 at gmail.com. I appreciate it, man. It's been that really good feedback. And it definitely, uh, some of the shit really hits home when you go, you know what, you should do a podcast on this. And I'm like, that's fucking perfect. I didn't even think about that. So check out butterflyradio.com. It's really cool. And I said, we got some new shit coming up, uh, some contests and stuff. We can win some stuff uh, coming up in a couple weeks. Oh, you know, also, Amazon. I know, I feel like a, a broken record going through the same shit every week. But, you know, you get new people downloading the podcast, so you got to update it. If uh, you're going to shop through Amazon, go to my website, jimflorentine.com. Click on the Amazon link there and shop from there, and I make a few pennies help support the podcast. Or you could donate, too. Jimflorentine.com, there's a donation button there. Um, I got some good feedback on the... I did Allison Rosen's podcast. She's uh, Adam Carolla's... A sidekick on Adam's podcast, and she has her own one. I did that one last week. I'll post it. I also did Crab Feast, which is really cool. I did that. I got a lot of good feedback on that. So if you guys want to search out those. And I got an upcoming one with Jay Moore coming that he didn't post yet. I did uh, like two weeks ago when I was out in L.A. So I'll keep you posted on that shit. You know how it is. And one last thing before we get to this week's podcast. TweakedAudio.com. You need some new earbuds? Everybody that's got them so far said they like them, man. They're cheap. You can get them from fourteen ninety five to thirty nine ninety five. That's the most expensive ones. You get a third off if you use the promo code Midgets for Comedy Metal Midgets and um, lifetime limited warranty and free shipping. Check them out if you need some new earbuds. They're really cool. I'm using them right now as I do the podcast. Seven styles, seven different colors. Check out their website, tweakedaudio.com. Put in the promo code Midget. You get thirty three percent Midgets. And you get 33% off. What a fucking deal. All right. This week's podcast is going to be a very angry one. Most of them are anyway. But this one, especially, I have so much rage for this. I didn't even think about doing this until I had an encounter about six days ago. And I said, this, that's the next podcast. And I don't know why, because I do hate the place. And I, I, I'm... I'm surprised I didn't think of it earlier, but we're going to do it on banks. What scumbag, scumbags banks are. Okay. I've been with this uh, one branch, Wells Fargo. I don't give a shit to say who it is. I've been with them for 14 years. They used to be First Union. Then they switched over to Wachovia, which is a fucking stupid name. And then they merged with Wells Fargo. So they've been Wells Fargo for the last four or five years. I've been with them since 1999 or 98. Loyal customer, put a bunch of money in there. I used to get CDs back in the day when the interest rate was like 5%. I throw a few grand, five, 10 grand in there, collect some interest on it after a year, you know, whatever. 
safe investments because the fucking rate was great. So I'm like, what the hell? Didn't trust the stock market back then. So I've gotten loans from them, two different loans. They've made, and I've kept a lot of money in just a savings account just sitting there because I was afraid of the stock market until I figured out what the hell it really was. And I just heard all these nightmares of these comedians getting like a $250,000 advance from like NBC to do a show and they invested all in the stock market and they lost everything. So I was always petrified to do that. So I said, fuck it, I'm leaving it in my bank. I'll collect, you know, 3%, 2.5%, 3% interest in my savings account. At least I'm not going to lose it. I had no money for a long time. So when I finally got a little, I'm like, fuck that. I'm, there's no way I'm losing. I remember when I was like 35, I was paying my these bills off in change. And I was like, shit, something's got to fucking give here. And then I wound up booking a couple commercials for a lot of money. And then I started, uh, and that shit just started taking off from there. But I remember paying, going down to the local supermarket and putting it in that change bucket and paying my bills off and all the fucking change I had. So when I finally got some, I was very conservative. So I gave the banks a lot of business. A ton just sitting there, in there, and they're making money off of it. Couple loans, like I said. So now cut to five, six days ago. My wife's got a check that she gives me that she that she has to give it to me, but they signed it to her. So I have to. She signs the check over to me, and then I sign the back. Three hundred bucks, okay. So I told her, I said, I don't know, man. I go, I guarantee you're going to have a... First of all, I don't even go in the banks anymore. I go to the drive-thru because they fucking bombard you. As soon as you walk in there, you got fucking eight guys coming out of these offices. Sir, look, you know, checking out the, the teller, you know, checking out the computer screen in your account. Sir, you know, um, I think I have a better account. You could put that money in. Fuck you. Stop looking at my fucking financial statements, motherfucker. Yeah, really? What are you going to do? Every The interest rate in any savings or, or any money market, is nothing is over 1%. How are you going to fucking help me? You're going to give me from a half a percent to three quarters of a percent on like fucking $7,000? What does that come out to at the end of the year? Fucking six bucks? You know what? I don't want to fill out the paperwork. I don't have time for that. But they do that all the time. They circle around. Oh, you have a debit card? Uh, no, you don't. maybe you should get one. Shut the fuck up. I don't need a debit card. I don't complicate my life. No reason for debit cards. Debit cards are the biggest fucking scam in the world if you really think about it. First of all, a debit card, you cannot spend more than $1,500 in a day on a debit card. So say you're out, say you're on your honeymoon, say you're out fucking, you know, you want to pay off your week of uh, the hotel bill plus, you know, all the the room service and you, you know, going out to dinner with your wife or your chick and, you know, it's over like 1500 bucks. Say the rooms were like 1300 and then you want to go to a dinner and something else. If you hit 1500 they will not let you charge over $1,500 in a day. So if you have fucking $100,000 in your bank account, and you have a debit card, you cannot spend more than fifteen hundred. Hey, that's my money, motherfucker. So you're telling me I can only spend fifteen hundred? So right there is awful. Say you have a big emergency, you need to. Say your fucking engine blows up, and you're driving across country, and you're like, you know what? Let me pull in this gas station. It's fucking twenty two hundred dollars for a new engine. Put it in. I'll wait a day. But you can't because you have a debit card, and there's only a fifteen hundred dollar limit. Who needs that? But of course, they don't tell you that when you sign off for it. They don't tell you any of that. You eventually just find out, like, oh, yeah, well, that's that's our policy. Also, a debit card, you buy something online. With a credit card, if you get fucked, it's some kind of scam or they try to rip you off or they charge extra, your credit card, you call your credit card company up, they will go after that company. They will put that on hold. They will not take it off. You won't have to pay it on your credit card until they, they solve it, What's going? what happened. Whether you owe them the money or they tried to fuck you and you don't owe them the money. But the credit card goes to work for you. Any credit card will do that. Which is a great feature on a credit card. You buy some shit off of Amazon or wherever. A furniture store and you put it on your credit card and they fuck you. And you call your credit card company up. Hey, man, I wasn't supposed to be charged this. Please look into it. Okay, no problem. And then they get back to you and a lot of times they, they're on your side. They always take your side. I love that. Okay, with a debit card, they are not obligated to do that. You buy furniture on a debit card or anything, and they fuck you over, they are not obligated to go to that company and say, hey, man, what's the problem? They go, no, nope, not with a debit card. So nobody knows that either. They don't tell you that either. Because you think, you know, what credit cards been doing that for years. <coughs> All right, perfect. But no, they don't tell you that. And then they, I, my uh, sister had that happen to her. She bought something on um, 
some furniture for a house, and they overcharged about like 400 bucks. And she called the ca- credit card. She's like, well, we're debit card, so we technically we don't have to help you on that. And she goes, okay, technically you don't, but are you going to? And she's like, no, sorry, we can't. That's not our policy. So fuck debit cards. And then third, if you get a hotel room, you have to put a deposit down in case you you wreck the room, you smoke in there, or whatever. You know, everybody, whether you got, you know, you have to put a deposit down in case there's some room charges or whatever. So they put like either two hundred and fifty or five hundred bucks, depending how long you're gonna stay, on your credit card, and they hold it on your credit card until you check out, and they make sure there's no damage in the room, there's no smoke, no weather. With a debit card. You could use your debit card to do that, but they hold that money. They freeze that money for 7 to 10 business days. 7 to 10. So say you only have 700 bucks on, in your bank account through your debit card, right? And you're like, all right, I'm going to Atlanta. I got 700 bucks to spend. You check into the hotel. They freeze 500 bucks for 7 to 10. Even after you check out, you still have another 3 to 4 more or 5 or whatever it is, business days before they, they unfreeze that money. So that money is fucking gone for almost a week straight that you cannot use. Your money that you cannot use. But they don't tell you that either when you get a debit card. So what good is a debit card? For what reason? If you have a credit card, use your credit card. Every time you don't, you want to carry cash, use your credit card. Everything you truck and charge, all right, I'm going to charge. I'm like, what's the difference? Why would you have a debit card and a credit card? That's two statements you have to check out. That's two you got to make sure. That's two that's coming out of your bank. You don't need that. It's just more aggravation. It's more bills. It's more fucking drama. It's more shit. You have one credit card and you pay off as much as you can at the end of the month. That's what you do. The worst. No reason for a fucking debit card. None. They try to get me every time I go in the bank. You have a debit card, so I'm trying to cash a check. No. Well, you could use it for identification. I go, oh, yeah, really? Yeah? My license doesn't work anymore? Well, yeah, that works. Yeah, of course you could use your license. But, you know, you can also use a debit card for identification. I go, so when I go to the... The airport, I'm on that. I could just show a debit card when I'm getting on the plane. She's like, no. I go, because you just said it was for identification. I'm sorry. I must have misunderstood you. All right, well, at least when I go to get liquor at the liquor store and a guy decides to ID me because he IDs everybody, I could just show my debit card. No, you can't, sir. That that won't work. Oh, because you said identification. I'm sorry. I'm Fuck, man. All right. Well, at least... um, Say if I go to a club tonight and the bouncer decides to ID me, I could show my debit card. She's like, you're being difficult. I go, you don't want to fucking start at this shit. Okay? The only time I ever take my license out of my wallet, the three different times at a fucking, at a, at a bar, at a liquor store, or getting on a plane, and I can't use it any time. So basically, the debit card I can only use for in the bank at that moment. That's it. Other than that, it doesn't count for identification anywhere else. Do I have that right? Well, yeah, you do. It's just easier, sir. No, it's not easier. It's I, I got another card in my wallet that I don't need. I got enough fucking shit in my wallet. Now I got to put another card in there. For what? So every once in a while, every fucking twice a month when I go to cash a check, I can pull it out. Yeah, here's my debit card. One woman actually said to me, well, you know, it's good to have, sir, just in case, you know, maybe you forget your driver's license here, you know, and, and then you walk away and forget it. So at least with the debit card, you don't have to take out your driver's license. They go, oh, well, eventually I would know. I think I I could track that down. You know what I mean? I think, you know, whether it's a day later and, I, you know, I go to get my wallet and I'm putting it in my pocket. I'm like, shit, where's my license? And then I'm like, well, when's the last time I took it out? I barely ever take it out. Oh, it was in the bank. Well, let me go back to the bank and get it. Not that big of a deal. It really isn't that big of a deal. And if you had it in front of you, you before I even walked out the door, you're like, sir, sir, here's your driver's license. You're forgetting it. No reason for a fucking debit card. ATMs, enough of them too. They stink. There's no reason for them. You get fucking fees everywhere you go. Just cheap, cheap people have ATM cards. People that don't want to carry a lot of cash because they think they're going to spend a lot if they have a lot on them. Well, fucking, you know what? That's not my problem, okay? You have no discipline in your life that if you carry, you're going out with your friends and you carry 300 in cash that you're going to spend it. What you just you just you have money on it, so you're just going to spend it all. You what are you going to walk by Victoria's Secret with your guy friends and just start buying underwear? And your guy friends like, what are you doing, dude? You buying it for your wife? No, man, I got money. I just I I, I got to buy shit. I can't help it. I got money on me. It's not going to happen. It's for fucking cheap people that just hope when they go out with their friends, everybody else is going to pay for their shit. 
because they'll go, oh, I gotta go, I gotta hit an ATM. If there's an ATM here, they have to ask the waiter. No, there isn't. There's one down the street. Oh shit, dude, could you get me? In a, well, how much money do you bring out? You know, there's seven guys. How much? Well, I got like 25 bucks in cash. Oh yeah, that's good. Seven guys, 25 dollars in cash. So we get around the beers. How many is that gonna? How many could 25 bucks pay for? Four with a tip. But you got seven guys, so that's what you brought out today. Well, I just figured there'd be an ATM. Well, why don't you just take 200 out? You're out with seven guys. I just, I don't like to carry that much cash. Why? But, you know, I don't know. You know, you never know. I, I might get mugged. Really? You got Wrangler jeans on and a mullet haircut. Nobody's going to think you have any money. Nobody's going to look at you and go, that guy's got a lot of cash. He's got Wranglers on that I got at Walmart today for nine bucks. He's got a mullet. So he must have a lot of cash on him. Nobody thinks you have Nobody's getting mugged. I'd much rather get mugged with cash, 170 bucks in cash, than someone stealing my debit card and fucking take off with it and start charging shit all over the place. Oh, yeah, that's good. So they got my bank account. They got all that shit. They could siphon shit out. They got all my information. Oh, yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah, sign me up. That's what I want. ATM are for cheap fucks. I know who you are. I'm in the comedy clubs every night. It's always that guy. Dude, the ATM's broke. He comes back. Then halfway through the night, because every, every ATM is a, is a service charge unless you go to your bank. So then you got the asshole halfway through the night. Dude, can you go to my bank? They don't charge me a service charge. Now I got to go drive eight miles out of the way to find a fucking Bank of America to save you a $3 service charge. I just drove drunk. I got to the club. Now I got to get back on the highway to save you three bucks. Our friendship's over. That's what I want to do. It, people, seriously, hey, people at ATM, they're retarded. They're cheap. Okay, so if you're cheap, why would you have an ATM card where you're going to get hit with fees everywhere you go? Everywhere you go, unless it's your bank, they're going to charge you two bucks, three bucks, four bucks. If you're in a strip club, it's like seven. Every time you go to an ATM, for what? You, but instead, you couldn't just, before you left the house, just take out a few hundred. Instead, you go, no, nah, I'm just going to go because I, I, you know, I'll just take out like 50. That's all I plan on spending tonight. Really? You have no discipline in your life. If that's the way you have to do it. That's the way you got to live your life. Let me just take 50. That's all I'm spending. You have no fucking willpower to just go, no. No, that's okay. I'm not going to, I don't need any more beers. I don't need to buy that. No, it's okay. No, all right. I'm good. Just have you, you don't want to carry cash, have your credit card, you go to the bar, you give it to the bartender, hey, here's my credit card, we're going to get a bunch of rounds, the guy fucking holds it back there, at the end of the night, he adds it up, and you fucking, that's, that's how you do it. It's simple, anyone that, these fucking babies that don't want to carry cash, rely on ATM, so all the bank is making this money as you're out fucking, because you're a cheap motherfucker, all these banks are making three bucks here, two bucks here, seven at the strip club, another three at the 7-Eleven, oh yeah, great. You just gave the bank more money. You happy? So where was I? <laughs> All right, so getting back to, I don't know how I went off on that tangent. Getting back to, my wife gives me the check. She signs it over to me. I go in my bank. I go, All right, it's going to be a battle. Because like I said, I just go through the drive through so they don't bother me. Because every time you go in there to fucking, you know... They want to bring into an office and sign you up for some other shit. You know, I think your money would be better here. Shut the fuck up. No, it wouldn't. What do you know? I go in there, put the check down. I'm trying to cash it through my savings account. The woman's like, um, this, uh, I don't know if I can cash this. I'm like, why? She says, well, it's signed over. Who is this? I'm like, it's my wife. She's like, well, is she on the count? I go, no. Oh, she goes, well. I can't cash this. I'm like, why? I go, I've done that before. People signed over checks to me, and then I put it in my account. No, no, we don't do that here. I go, what do you mean you don't do it here? I've, I've done it. I've been with your bank for 14 years. I've done it at least 20 times over the years. Probably the last time I did it was like a year and a half ago. No, no, I don't think so, sir. You must be thinking of a different bank. I go, so you're telling me that I don't know what bank I had. So you're telling me I have another bank that I, that I forgot about, that I have money in? Because that's good to know, because I didn't know I had other money in another fucking bank. I got to go home and go through my drawer and find out what, uh, you know, that maybe I'm signed up with Bank America too and I forgot all about it. I got fucking brain damage. Thank you. Sir, if your wife has an account here, is your wife on this account? I go, no, she's not. Well, if she, 
if you want to cash this, she's going to have to open an account here. I go, well, she's not going to do that. Well, why, why, why wouldn't she? Then you could cash. I go, why? I go, she's been at the same bank for 12 years. Why is she going to come over to here? I'm going to drag her over here so she can open an account so I can cash a check for $300. Does that make sense? Seriously, does that make sense that I got to go, hey, come on down to my bank, fill out all this paperwork, give me your social security, let them run a security, let them run your social security so it affects your fucking, you know, your credit score. It goes down because people are fucking, you know, looking at your credit score and your numbers go down another 30 points. Yeah, that's what you want to just so I could cash a $300 check that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I go, look, I've been here 14 years. You guys have done it a bunch of times. She's like, well, then it's a new policy. She didn't even know. I go, so you don't even know when it started. She goes, well, maybe I could see if I could just deposit it in your account. I said, you know what? Fine. Do that. I'll take that. If that's what I got to do, deposit it. Fine. Five minutes later. Nope, sir. We can't even deposit this. Your wife's going to open an account here. I go, she's not going to open an account here. She's like, well, I can't do anything about it. I'm like, that's stupid. You got to see these people online behind me. They're like, fucking holy shit. I go, no, that's that's we, that's stupid. And then the manager comes over. Sir, we can't cash. We can't we can't do this. I go, so you basically don't trust me. I go, you, I've been here for 14 years. You think that I have a $300 check for my wife that I'm trying to screw over my wife over 300 bucks. That's what it's all about. He goes, no, no, that's not. It. I go, yeah, it is. Because you're obviously, you don't trust me that I'm going to freaking take cash this check that I, that I forged her signature and then signed it over to me. That's what it's about. What else could it be? You don't trust me. Do you really think I'm going to do that? Look how much money I have in my account. You really think I'm going to do that on a $300 check? You really, seriously. I've been here 14 years, never a problem with any of my accounts ever. But I'm going to do that. Sir, that's our policy. I go, all right, you know what? I'm done with you guys. Give me a, I'm going to close up. I had a business account and a savings account. I go, I'm going to close up both accounts. I, I can't deal with this. This is ridiculous. I go to a bank that the, that doesn't do that. She goes, all the banks are like the same way. I go, yeah, Gar- there's fucking five banks within a one-mile radius here. I'll find one that doesn't fucking chart, that, that won't cash a check that's signed over. So I'm closing out both accounts. The guy goes, okay, fine. Didn't even try to stop me. Sends me over to the desk. The guy's like, you want to close out the accounts? I'm like, yep. Okay. Ten minutes later, I walked out of the fucking bank. Both clo- both bank accounts closed. Been there 14 years. Fuck you, Wells Fargo. Didn't even I, Not that I want I didn't want my ass kissed. But they didn't even go, hey, you know, can, can we work this out? This must be a misunderstanding. Let's see what we could do. Nothing. All right, no problem. Took my money right out of there. Nice. Went to a little local branch that has like fucking three other banks in New Jersey. And I opened an account there. I'll give the business to them. Not the fucking big bad fucking, you know, Monopoly Bank, the big fucking, you know. You had a Wells Fargo and the Bank of Americas that basically bankrupt this country. I mean, you realize that the banks are basically what fucked this country over. That's why we're in shape today. Okay, six, seven years ago, whatever, they started giving out loans to anybody. Homeless people would come in and get loans to buy a house. They didn't even care. A homeless guy would come in with a cup of change. They go, you want a house? He's like, well, I only have this change. Oh, okay, don't worry about it. Give me the change. Yeah, we'll put you in a house. Well, yeah, and then they're like, well, take it two months later anyway, so fuck him. He'll make a few payments. We'll make a bunch of money off him until they can't pay it anymore because we know he can't afford it. We checked out his accounts. He doesn't have any money or anybody, and we'll take the house back in a year. Meanwhile, we get uh, 12 months of free payments that went into our fucking bank, and then we take the house back and we resell it. So that's what these motherfuckers did, giving loans out to anybody. Anybody that walked in there, within an hour, you were out of there. No problem. 450000 You only make forty grand a year teaching? Yeah, here's, a four, here's a 450000 for a fucking a house that you can't even afford with 17 bedrooms and eight bathrooms. No problem. We're going to have it in a year. Take the money. And that's why the whole housing market collapsed. And then, of course, fucking Bush and Obama. Not, uh, Obama did it too. Bailed out all these banks when they lost all this money. Right, because they fucked up. They totally did it. It was nothing to do with anybody else. Just say no. You go up. You can't get a loan. Nope, you're not qualified. Nope, they didn't give a shit. Fucking ruin the whole market, the recession, everything. And now we're at the point where they won't give anybody loans. In the last two years, they won't give any out loans. So now we're fucked. People have money again. They want to fucking get a house. They want to get a loan. But the banks are like, nope, we can't give you a loan. Nope, you're not qualified. We need more paperwork. We need more. What happened in 2009? You made $10,000 less than 2010. So I don't, we can't. We, your income's not steady. That's the fucking feedback you get. That's what my friend got. Because he made 10000 less four years ago. 
So now nobody, so everybody's just renting. Nobody can buy houses because the banks are fucking keeping everybody down. And that's why the economy's still in the shitter. That's why everybody's renting. But meanwhile, the stock, stock market's fucking flourishing because everybody's putting their money because they have extra money. They want to buy a house. The banks won't give them the fucking cash, won't give them a loan. So they put the money in the stock market. So instead, the bank goes, oh, we got to make money. So let's just, just just tack on fees everywhere. Anything, we're going to put a fucking fee on. Any move you make in the bank, we're putting a fee on. My brother owns these apartment complexes, right? There's like 110 units. Most of them pay in cash at the end of the month. So he has to deposit like, I don't know, you know, over 25 grand a month in cash because he gets most of a few checks, but mostly cash. Wells Fargo, his bank, charges him any big deposit over twenty grand. Wells Fargo charges like a point oh oh one percent to deposit cash. Are you fucking kidding me? I could see if it was withdrawing cash. I could understand that, even though that's a scumbag move too, because you're taking money out of the bank and they can't use that to make money off of you. I get it; it's wrong, but to put money in the cash, they're charging him. So it cost him, he said, like an average of fifty bucks a month just to put cash in the bank. He he's been with Wells Fargo. He does a ton of business. He's got millions of loans from there. He does, you know, buys old houses and apartment complex, fix them up. Does all that shit. So he's been a lot of bank business. Goes to the head of the bank at the Wells Fargo. So there's nothing we could do. We can't waive that fee. It comes from above. He's like, you got to be kidding me. So you're going to charge me $50 basically every month at the end of the month when I deposit cash in here. Because it's over $20,000. Is that the most retarded? I mean, that's the most retarded thing I've ever heard. They're just like the airlines, the banks, the scumbags, right? Hitting you with a fee everywhere. And none of the politicians do a thing about it. They just let it slide. They're all fucking in with the bankers. Hey, look this way. Hey, we'll give you a cash contribution to your fucking campaign. All right, look the other way. We're going to throw another five here. I remember trying to get a money order from my bank, and they were trying to charge me five bucks. I go, five dollars for a money order? I go, that's that's all right. I'll uh, I'll just go to the post office. They're dollar seventy nine there. Of course, the manager comes over. Sir, look, I'm looking at your accounts. If you open this other account and put your money in there in the savings you'll get free you can get a free money order i go why would i do that i go there's a there's a fucking post office a half a mile down the road i'll make the drive over there no it'll, it won't take long you just switch your money over here and just open a new account i go why am i going to go sit in your office for 15 minutes to go through my social security number again to switch money to a new account so i can get a free money order i only use a money order once every 20 years Okay, I needed it for this specific thing. I'm not opening a new account. So it won't take that long. I, he's like, do you have five minutes? I go, nope. He goes, how much time do you have? I go, I got four seconds. Can you get it done in four seconds? He's like, we can't get that done in four seconds. I go, then forget it. And I went to the post office for $1.79 and got my money order because you're going to charge me $5 for a fucking money order. Charging me for bank for, for checks. Like I said, been there for 14 years. Two years ago when I opened a business account, we're going to have to charge you, uh, you know, whenever you order reorder checks, it's going to be another $40. I go, for what? Well, because they're, you know, because we're giving you new checks. I go, nah, nah, it's not going to happen. I go, well, that's our policy. I go, then forget it. I won't open a business account. Because every time you go in a bank, it's not like the same person. Every week, there's six different new people working there. So you don't even know anyone. Nobody knows you by your name. There are all these fucking the turnover rates like a McDonald's. So you don't know anyone. Nobody gives you a break. Nobody explains anything to you. You got all these new people you got to deal with now. So I was telling the woman when I'm up my business account, I go, you know what? I'll just open a business account somewhere else. She's like, that, sir, that doesn't make sense because you already have a savings account here. Now you're going to have to go to two banks. I go, I'm not paying 40 bucks for checks. Well, they're nice checks. They're in color. I go, I don't, I don't need a nice check. I don't give a fuck if, if my, my check is in color. All right, I'm sending a check out to pay for some for somebody that I, I a bill. Nobody cares if it's oh look out. I don't even know if I'm gonna cash this. This is in color. This is awesome. I want a plain check. Nobody's gonna call me back, dude. What's up with that? You don't even have any designs on your check. It's weird, man. I got your money that you owed me. I thanks, but the check was just real plain. What's up with that? Nobody has ever said that. Nobody gives a shit. I don't care what my checks look like. I don't need designs on them. I don't, same with the stamps. You go to post, so what kind of stamps you want? You want this one? I don't give a fuck. Just give me one that I can stick on an envelope. I don't need a fucking flag. I don't need a Santa Claus. I don't need any of that shit. 
you got to put a rubber thing over it anyway. These fucking bars. Nobody's going to even see what the hell it is. By the time they get their letter, like, what it was this? I don't know. There's shit all over the stamp. Nobody cares. Old people do. I want to get the, I want to get the candy cane ones because it's Christmas. That's what old fucks do. So then the manager had to come for that, and I wound up getting the checks waived, the, the fee, because she's like, no, we can't do that. And then the guy came in. I go, all right, well, look. Uh, all right, well, fine. We'll do it for you. There you go. But they wouldn't waive that 300 bucks on a check signed over. Took all the money out. Such scumbags. They just lurk around and look at your accounts. So, all right, for, look, there's, th- stop telling me you. I could put your money in a, a better account. No, you can't, okay? You can't get more than 1% interest in a bank right now on a CD, a money market, or, or your savings account. It's not nothing over 1%, okay? So if it's three quarters of a percent to fucking, you know, a 1% over, you know, five grand in there, it's not going to be any money. There's no reason to switch that. When it gets up to four, five percent, when I can go from 1% to five, then I'll change it. Really should move this money over. Here's my card. Go fuck yourself. Sit behind your fucking douchey desk with your goofy tie on. How long you been banking here? Go go fuck yourself. Who cares? I need to get out of here as soon as possible. I'm telling you, man. It's just like, just keep your money under your mattress. There's no reason to put it in a bank. You're getting 1% interest, even a CD. If you want to put a CD, like 5 grand or 10 grand in a CD... In a bank for five years, even you can get maybe like one point one percent, which is probably going to be like you know three hundred bucks over five years. Is that really worth it? So you can't even touch that money or in five years in case of emergency. So if you, or you get a penalty. So you're going to make three hundred bucks. Just fucking keep it under your mattress. Just keep your cash in your house. That's all you got to do. There's no reason to fucking keep going in and out of banks. They're scumbags. Everything they're charging you for. My one bank's like, if you make three withdrawals in a month out of your savings account, that's what Wachovia tr- came up with like five years ago. We have to, we, we charge you a dollar t- every time you withdraw more money. You can have three for free. Oh, thanks. Really? So I can withdraw three different times in a month for free. Well, thanks. You're really doing me a favor. So all that money that I have sitting in there that you're making money off of, you're going to charge me if I take, if, if I, I need a fourth withdrawal in one month. Well, it's only a dollar, sir. Yeah, well, okay, then, then waive the dollar if it's only a dollar. Well, we can't do that. That's our policy. But you just said it's only a dollar. So if it's only a dollar, just waive it. To me, that makes sense. So that's just our policy now. Yeah, okay, of course. Of course it is. Of course it is that nobody knows about until you get fucked. Just like the airlines. That's all they are. Nobody does anything about it. Every politician looks the other way. Yeah, throw another fee here. Throw that, throw that. What do we do? We just get fucked and just got to just sit there and take it. Yep. Oh, well. Just got to take it. What am I going to do? What am I, yeah, you know. Hey. I don't, you know, what am I supposed to do? I got to put it in a bank. No, you don't. You don't have to put it. Just use your fucking credit card. Use your credit card. That's the safest thing to do. With a debit card, too, I forgot. Debit card, you rent a, a rent a car, forget it. That's a whole other thing because it doesn't cover. On a credit card, your, insur- it covers your, your insurance covers it on your credit card, on a rent-a-car, so you don't have to get their fucking goofy insurance for nineteen ninety five a day. Well, everything's covered. Yeah, I've been driving fucking 30 years. I've only been in two accidents. I think I'll be okay. Well, I'm just saying, if someone backs into you when you're in a parking lot, well, nobody's, uh, sir, like I said, sir, two, two accidents in 30 years, so once every 15 years. And the last one I was in was like eight years ago. So I think I got a, my average is another seven years. I'll be okay. I don't want your fucking insurance for 20 bucks a day. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. Even if I didn't have insurance on the car, I wouldn't be worried about it. I don't fucking worry about that shit. You're worried about it, not me. Fuck banks. Tell you, just scum of the earth. If you're going to do it, take, go into the local. Let's let's start supporting the local mom and pop banks. Let's get get rid of the Bank Americas, the Wells Fargo, all of those fucking. Uh, I don't know the other ones out there. You guys know. Get get take your shit out of there. Go to the little local bank, man. Fuck them. Somebody has to do something. It's time. These, you, you, yeah, my wife's going to come there and open an account so I could fucking cash a $300 check. Yeah, we, yeah, we're right on that. No problem. We have fucking plenty of time to go do that. Sure, she's going to open an account here. Sitting in the office for 25 minutes. 
as you fucking type away. Type in and type. What the fuck are you typing about? Here's a name. Here's the address. Either give me the money or not. I got to sit there with your fucking goofy outfit. Hey, it's a nice day today. Really? Yeah, the weather's been good. Go fuck yourself. Who cares? Yeah, I know. I just walked. I'm in a, I'm in a short sleeve shirt. I had a feeling the fucking weather was nice. I just walked in from it. Douche. All right, we're done.